and left at center field fence. Right now a bit breezy as uh, action underway here today and that wind blowing out across the field really from left field out across towards right field and we've seen some balls that have been hit that direction here in this game. 17 to 6 is the score here in the game before us right now. Again they are in the top of the sixth inning and as they wrap up then we will uh, have just a brief time of warm up for our two teams at as Martinsburg is in action here in our first game today. They come in at 15 and 5, and they'll take on Atlantic Shores Christian, the Seahawks, out of Chesapeake, Virginia. They are 6, 6, and 1 so far on the season. So, Gary, as we begin to break down this matchup just a little bit, let's start with the Seahawks as you got a chance to talk a little with their coaching staff. Well, they, they play in the Metro Conference in the Virginia Beach area. It says it's a five-team conference, small private school conference. Uh, they have uh, a couple of players he said for us to look out for were uh, the guy who's playing first base, Diego Duran, who's uh, normally an outfielder, but his arm is hurting, so they're playing him at first base. Uh, he's a junior, and they're heavily dominated by juniors. They have uh, uh, and Chase James, who's a second baseman and one of the uh, son of the coach whose uh, name is Jesse James and the coach said to refer to him as outlaw and then laughed but I promised I, I would do that um, and he's got he's got a normally pretty young team but J uh, James is playing second he's normally the first baseman so they're shifting people around uh, to account for the injury and the kid who's pitching he said uh, does a good job another junior who's a uh, pitching for him. That is Nick Matfield who will be on the mound today for the Seahawks. They have won three of their last four games, so come in playing maybe some of their best of baseball. Last time out was Friday of last week, and they scored a victory over Broadwater Academy. The final win, that one was 17-3. Meanwhile, for the Bulldogs of Martinsburg at 15-5, and five, they have won at six in a row and nine of their last ten. And really, uh, stretch it out even further, Gary, they got off to that 0-3 start, but since that time, 15 wins in their last 17 games. Yeah, it looks like they've been scoring a ton of runs, too. I just, just running down the averages and the little arithmetic, and they're scoring with nine and a half runs a game almost and and they're not giving up that many they're giving up they're uh, giving up about four and a half runs in a uh, game yeah, that has been the thing. They have been putting the bat on the ball and that ability to score runs and beginning to uh, really develop, if you will, a pitching rotation that uh, certainly uh, is something that they'll be needing here today. And really you need throughout the entire high school baseball season in West Virginia. You have the opportunity to play 32 games, and there's, uh, frankly, not a lot of time to get that many games in. And so, you know, our teams that are down here for this tournament certainly used to playing four and even five times a week. And these tournaments particularly test the pitching staffs of high school balls. I mean, most high school teams, if you got two good pitchers, you're doing really well. And you can't get through a tournament here with just two guys. Yeah. You're playing three guys in a row. You've got the, the uh, pitching limits uh, that require rest after uh, their one day or two day rest, depending on how many pitches. And uh, but which is another good thing about tournaments like this. It gives the coaches a chance to. Uh, really see what they've got and some of the other pitchers that they might be not be using in the league games because they have such importance for seating in the tournaments. Well, our game going on before us now going to the bottom half of inning number six, 17 to six is the score. So the team to the plate needing at least a run to keep this one going, uh, or two runs really to keep it going as they'll have to get that deficit back under 10 runs or the mercy rule would kick in as that mercy rule in effect here in South Carolina and in effect here in this tournament. As they wrap up, we'll have uh, some brief warm-ups, a chance for the grounds crew to get the field together and a chance for uh, our umpires to uh, collect themselves as we then would get into action today with uh, Martinsburg taking on Atlantic Shores Christian. The pregame show being brought to you by W. Harley Miller Systems, providing custom integration services for home and office automation home theater, networking, audio, video distribution, and more. They're online at whmsystems.com 
or phone 304-350-1931. Now let's take our break and then come back as we'll continue to look at this matchup, but also we'll take a look at what else is going on involving Eastern Panhandle teams here today at the Mingo Bay Classic. We'll welcome Matt Crawford into the broadcast as well. It's West Virginia High School Baseball on Talk Radio, WRNR, and TV 10. When you're hurting, we're here. When things are confusing, we're here. When you need answers, we're here. Brown Funeral Home. We've been caring for families like yours for generations, since 1880. Whether you want to plan ahead or you need us now, our families are precious to us, and so are yours. Brown Funeral Home. In Martinsburg, Inwood, and Charlestown, Ranson, we're here when you need us. If you hang the WV Medicine sign, it certainly has helped take us to another level. He literally, literally saved my life. It's just mind-boggling to me that he was able to do what he did. We're able to affect much more of a difference for our patients with these resources. Having people treated locally uh, enhances their overall care. They treat you great and they're down to earth in the West Virginia way that all West Virginians treat each other. And to Carolina Forest High School, it is the home of Panther Baseball. We are at the Mingo Bay Classic. In you hang the WV Medicine sign certainly has helped. Features uh, better than 90 teams playing at 10 different sites all around the Myrtle Beach area. Those teams coming from states all up and down the East Coast, and that includes several from the state of West Virginia, including five of our six Eastern Panhandle Athletic Conference teams. Matt, we've talked about it a little bit before. Musselman making the decision not to make this lengthy trip, but instead to spend their spring break week playing some teams around the Mountain State and the region. And we'll see how that uh, affects them. I, we talked about it over the course of Miller time uh, throughout last week, and I'm not uh, so sure that that at this point in the season isn't going to be a little more beneficial to them than uh, coming down here would have been. I think in the uh, beginning part of the season, obviously, uh, you just want to get in as many games as possible. So last year's spring break trip, uh, I think, worked out well. But when you get this late in the season, and you're only a few weeks removed from sectional play, so uh, you want to kind of gear up for playoffs and maybe not travel as far and just play teams from around the mountain states. So obviously a fun tournament to come down and be in, especially for high school kids, being able to spend uh, the week at the beach and get to play teams you are never going to get to play again unless you're down here and get uh, seated up against them again. But uh, I'm not necessarily opposed to what Musselman's doing either. Uh, Musselman off today. I'm not sure if this is a travel day for Coach Hartman and his team as they'll be in action on Tuesday and Wednesday down at South of Charleston. Now that will include one game tomorrow against Brighton York who is coming down for uh, that uh, kind of round-robin event. And then a doubleheader action on Wednesday, including at least one, if not both, games against South Charleston. Then on Thursday, Musselman will be home as they'll take on Berkeley Springs, their only home game throughout the course of the week, as they then on Friday are scheduled to go up to Cumberland, Maryland, to face Allegheny and Mountain Ridge in a two-team doubleheader. And then uh, Saturday of this week, Week. They would be at Greencastle Antrim in Pennsylvania to wrap up what will be a very busy spring break week for them. As for the other teams in the Panhandle, well, they are right here at the Mingo Bay Classic. And uh, coming up this evening, our broadcast will be Jefferson at Sockesty, South Carolina, as they will take on a Sockesty team that uh, is just a couple of games under 500. Matt, you'll be handling the play-by-play -play for that one later. What do you see in that matchup? I see a team that has struggled this year. It's a team that's lost four out of five recently. So that's Sockesty team, obviously, uh, coming in with an 8-10 and 10 record. The record, I don't think, is necessarily going to show uh, what this team is capable of. They've had some good wins earlier in the season, but I've always been a uh, of the mindset it's what have you done for me lately coming into this game, especially when it comes to high school kids. So I'm interested to see what they look like. Jefferson's just 2-2 two and two over their last four games as well, and the Cougars have struggled scoring runs this year. They're pitching. We knew it was going to be there. They're sound defensively. It's a John Lowry a senior coach team. You know they're going to be competitive year in and year out, uh, but they're going to need to score runs while they're down here, and I think that's going to be uh, their biggest issue 
especially while they're down here, is just trying to get runs uh, across home play because you know the pitching and the defense is going to be there. Well, that game tonight scheduled to throw out the first pitch right around 7.15, so we are looking to get on the air right around 7 o'clock with the pregame show on Talk Radio, WRNR, and TV 10. So that is the second of our two games in doubleheader broadcast here today. Of course, game one, we are at Martinsburg. We'll take on Atlantic Shores Christian. Elsewhere today, uh, Hedgesville already in action. In fact, they might be just about wrapped up. Hedgesville is taking on Brockport out of New York. That is over at St. James, and that began at 9 a.m. this morning. And Washington may uh, just about be wrapped up as well as they were taking on Anatellis. I believe that's out of New York as well. That game way and it got underway at 9 o'clock this morning. Coming up at 3.45 this afternoon, the farthest trip from where we're at is out at Loris High School and Spring Mills is playing there and they are taking on Hastings. Now the game ahead of us has just wrapped up a 17-6 victory for West Hill and these are two teams that uh, both Martinsburg and Atlantic Shores are keeping an eye on because uh, Gary, what they do while there are 90 plus teams down here and they're all playing at 10 different sites you're going wow how do you manage all of that well basically you're looking at a bunch of small four team tournaments well that's right it, that's a, part of the thing that amazes me this is a three week uh, program that they have the, this is the third week and they run three separate uh, tournaments for teams up and down the coast and it's it's just incredibly well organized uh, and this year, at least for the first few days, it looks like the winner's going to cooperate. We won't be sitting out. We're not cold. It's not raining so far. Now, the only thing to deal with so far today, just a, a breeze. Uh, all right, a wind. It is a wind that has been shifting a bit right now, kind of behind us and blowing uh, right past us and out over that center field fence. Uh, if you're watching on uh, TV 10 on Comcast Cable or if you're picking us up on uh, uh, WRNR TV on YouTube, you can see the view as you uh, look through the uh, camera lens that uh, Matt is controlling that, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the wind blowing straight out towards center field and has kind of been shifting around just a little bit as we've been here so far this morning. Yep. Well, I woke up this morning and looked out the window of the hotel room, and there's a flag at the, the uh, shopping center <laughs> just across the road, and it was straight out. It was. It looked like it was cardboard. It was so flat. Uh, pretty pretty strong wind. Tell you, one of the other things that, that it's interesting about this tournament is they get some teams, like the two teams that are playing here, who are from up north, and sometimes they don't have uh, many games. There was a Canadian team last year yes. that was down here that played their first game because they hadn't been able to get on the field. And this year, the, the Westfall team, uh, which won this game here, uh, they would only played one game coming into this. And that's hard to believe because this tournament this year is a little later in the year than what it has been in the past years that we have come down to do the game broadcast. I mean, when we go back home, our Eastern Panhandle teams will only have two weeks left in their regular season, and then it will be time for sectional tournament play. And so I'm a little surprised that some of the teams that we're seeing out of the uh, more upper northeast uh, haven't gotten a game or two more under their belts than what we've seen in the past when teams have met here. Uh, looking at the schedule through the next couple of days for us and for our EPAC teams, Martinsburg and West Hill meet tomorrow morning. West Hill is the team that just scored that 17-6 uh, to 6 victory, so we'll be looking forward to that one. That was Jordan Elbridge, uh, the Elridge, pardon me, Jordan Elridge, that uh, they beat, and uh, they and Martinsburg will end up meeting on Wednesday. Tomorrow morning, we'll have that Martinsburg West Hill game again right around 11 with the 11 15 first pitch. And then tomorrow evening at 6, we're traveling out to Loris High as Spring Mills will take on the host of Loris in that matchup. Also tomorrow, Hedgesville takes on River Bluff. That'll be at 11 15. Jefferson takes on Lakewood at 1.30 in Washington and Worcester will meet at 1.30. On Wednesday our broadcast schedule is Washington versus Newark, New Jersey. That game broadcast will actually be 
at a little after 10 a.m. in the morning with a scheduled 10-15 first pitch. Then at 5 in the afternoon on Wednesday, we'll be at St. James, where Hedgesville will take on the host, St. James. Martinsburg and Jordan Eldridge uh, also playing at 10-15 on Wednesday. Jefferson and Rock Hill playing at 2:45 on Wednesday. And Spring Mills will battle Penfield also at 2:45 on Wednesday. All right, as the teams have uh, gone to their respective dugouts, Martinsburg down the right field line already beginning to loosen. The grounds crew working on the field here. Let's go ahead and take another one-minute timeout. When we come back, we'll hear from Martinsburg head coach Aaron Byler getting some of his thoughts on getting this tournament started and today's matchup with Atlantic Shores. This is the pregame show brought to you by W. Harley Miller Systems. They provide custom integration service for home and office automation, home theater networking, audio video distribution, and more. You can give them a call at 304-350-1931 or go to whmsystems.com. This is West Virginia High School Baseball on Talk Radio, WRNR, and TV 10. That is not. Welcome to La Bella Vita, named for my grandma Vita. Our mountaintop getaway honors her legacy while complementing the home's spectacular views. This recently renovated property boasts a breathtaking landscape of Deep Creek Lake while providing great open interior spaces for a sensational vacation. You'll immediately notice the great room allows for entertaining, dining, and relaxing after long days on the lake or skiing on the slopes of Wisp. Your family and friends will enjoy relaxing in all the open spaces. The home features six bedrooms, including four that are private suites. And each of the four levels of this home feature amazing visibility as far as the eye can see. Like our family, we hope you enjoy making memories here on the mountain. We love sharing the spacious, warm, and inviting home that overlooks the lake. Cheers to the beautiful life, La Bella Vita. The opportunity to play some good competition. This is a little later in the year than it has been in the past. So you guys are already 20 games in and playing some good baseball. How much do you really want to keep that going this week? You know, I, I talked to him yesterday about about how important it is to make sure that we keep momentum going in the right direction. We play really well this week, and we make sure we're not distracted by all the other things that being here uh, presents. You get to see some teams that you don't see any other time. What's that like? It's nice. It's nice. You know, we kind of play the same teams year in and year out back home. And you can come down here and today you get to see Atlantic Shores Christian who, you know, doing my homework scouting them, I think they're going to be pretty darn good. So we're excited about that. And then you look at the other teams in your bracket coming from, I believe, at least one from New York. So uh, do you look at that and kind of compare, hey, here's our baseball and how they play it in other places? It, it's nice to see where you stack up, you know, West Virginia, New York, Virginia. You know, it's kind of nice to see that, you know, it's kind of nice to show the kids, hey, I might be the best player in, in my area of West Virginia, but I'm not even close to the best player in, in some of these other states. So, you know, it's kinda, it kind of humbles the kids, I think, a little bit. You got a lot of games this week. How do you kind of approach your pitching and making sure you get things set up the way you want? You know, the way our season's kind of been set up, it's really no different than any other week. We're, we've been playing five or six every week since we started. So, you know, we'll just keep the same pitching rotation, and we got to make sure that we're getting quality starting pitching from the guys that we have been. You know, that's why we've been successful as of late, because we've been getting quality starting pitches, and guys are going five or six innings, and, and we're finally starting to hit the baseball. So if we do that, I think we'll be all right. Coach, good luck. Thanks, Matt. And there you hear from Aaron Byler in his second year as the head coach of the Martinsburg Bulldogs getting ready today to take on Atlantic Shores Christian and uh, obviously uh, Gary pitching key in the game of baseball no matter what level and for the Bulldogs uh, they've kind of developed that rotation as you heard coach talk about and he said hey we'll stick with that rotation and that means Trey Sign will get the baseball for this one today and uh, he has pitched very well with a record of four wins to just one loss. Yeah, he's pitched real well. His ERA is down around one. Uh, 
And he's getting first pitch strikes, which I think is just real important. He's at about 57, 58 percent. At least that I saw on Game Changer, which just has amazing stats. I, I, I play in a couple of fantasy baseball leagues, and we read this stuff, and there's stats that I don't understand on Game Changer. Uh, but he's throwing first pitch strikes, and he's not walking a lot of guys, uh, which is also important, just keeping the freebies off the base. He's got, uh, uh, what did I get here, 26, he's pitched 26 innings and struck out 23 guys, which is good ratio. Uh, it seems like he's a pretty good, solid starting pitcher. Yep, and the key will be the defense behind him and uh, how well they play there. And Martinsburg has uh, been uh, getting a little more consistent with that defensive effort. I know, uh, Matt, when we've talked with Coach Byler recently, that's one of the things he said they've been working on. Yeah, absolutely, and just staying consistent all the way around. I know on the offensive side of things, he's been just waiting for them to finally come through and get clutch hits. And I think uh, we saw that coming out party, if you will, that game against Spring Mills where they came out and scored 23 runs and really took advantage in two outs and took advantage of runners in scoring position. So I think right now, obviously, no coach is ever going to be satisfied with where their team is. That's what makes coaches just that much different than everybody else. Uh, but I think uh, Coach Byler's definitely starting to see his team more along the lines of where he expected them to be. It's just maybe taking a little bit longer than he expected. All right, let's take the final break as we wrap up our W. Harley Miller pregame show. When we come back, we'll take a look at today's starting lineups, and we'll get you ready for the opening pitch and all the play-by-play -play of West Virginia high school baseball on Talk Radio, WRNR, and TV10. now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I find those ads borderline offensive. <laughs> Rob and Dave in the morning call it their soft porn segment oh, of Eastern oh. Panhandle Talk. Hey, hey, treat every mic like a live <laughs> mic. We don't know where this is going right now. <laughs> Although Bechtel has a very nice product, I understand. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, the Utah Phillips has this uh, old, old uh, wobbly you know, folk singer and tells this story about how they, they, they take turns they take turns cooking on when they're out on the crew and that really somebody complains and they're the cook so this one guy doesn't want to be the cook he goes out cooks a bunch of moose turds makes them into a pie and serves it at dinner the guy takes a big bite goes spits it out says, that's moose turd pie. Good though. I knew I'd written down how many bases on ball sign gave out, and I couldn't find sitting right there up in the corner. <laughs> 11.30, so we're at least 15 minutes behind schedule right now. Well, that's not bad for this time of day. And when you get a 17-6 to 6 game. That should have been done in five. <laughs> that, was an, that was an ugly 17. To, even for a 17-6, to 6, it was ugly. <laughs> 30 more seconds. Actually, a few more than that, but 34 and a half more seconds. Is that better? I don't know. I think when I was looking at numbers, it looks like they throw a lot of balls away. Mm. The Errors. Defense, but the defense is not particularly good. Except for Atlantic Shores? No. For or Martinsburg? Yeah, they've, they've had some errors this year. They have gotten better at that. I think a lot of those may have been early. Early. Get ready.
We welcome you back in to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and Carolina Forest High School. Matt Miller along with Gary Geffert and Matt Crawford, Rob Mario, and Mike Hornby back at the studio, making sure that we get on both the radio airwaves and the TV with today's broadcast. Again, you can catch the video on TV 10. That is on the Comcast cable system in Berlin. In Jefferson County. If you don't have Comcast, pick it up through YouTube and go to WRNR TV and you can watch it through the WRNR TV YouTube channel. Here in game one today, Matt will be a part of the broadcast, but we'll be manning the camera. I'll handle your play-by-play and Gary Geffert with us for color commentary for this evening's game with Jefferson at Sockesty. We'll switch up those roles. Matt will handle the play-by-play along with Gary. I'll fill in occasionally with a few words here and there, but I'll run the camera for the uh, game coming up this evening as we look forward to bringing you doubleheader action both today tomorrow and Wednesday, and then we'll have to wait and see what uh, the schedule looks like on Thursday. Plan to bring you two more games, but won't know where of uh, once our umpires uh, get into position, us uh, getting ready to go as the umpires and the head coaches will meet behind home plate and we'll go over the ground rules here at uh, the Carolina Forest baseball field. Uh, Gary, one thing you can say about this facility, it's got the... Uh, uh, backstop with the, just the high post and then the netting which creates a great view and as we look around there is a lot of foul territory here at this facility there is indeed it's a it's a big field i don't know how far it is out to center field but that looks reasonably deep well, that's weird. yes and uh, out to uh, left and to right as well. Again, uh, don't have uh, exact dimensions, but uh, every bit comparable to uh, any of the ballparks back in the eastern panhandle, whether it be P.O. Faulkner or whether uh, Sager or uh, or Musselman, any of the other fields there as well. And so uh, beautiful facilities here and a uh, beautiful day for baseball. I haven't even checked uh, my current temperature to get an idea of what we're looking at going into this one with that breeze continuing to blow out to center field right now. 68 degrees and we are looking for a high that will go only about 4 degrees warmer. So about 72 uh, later this afternoon. Can't ask for better weather than no, that. It's, it's really pleasant. You know, I'm disappointed they didn't do infield practice. You know, Tom Boswell said there's two kinds of baseball fans. Those that watch, go to watch batting practice and those that don't and only the former will ever amount to anything. And <laughs> I feel about the same way with high school infield practice. I, each team has a little different ritual with, mm -hmm. with doing it and, and watching guys Lowry at, at Jefferson and uh, his son when he coached here or at Coach Byler and they all have little different rhythms that they do and, and I, I love that the, the rhythm, I love yeah. the ritual and uh, I miss it. I understand why they can't do it between games here otherwise they wouldn't get the games I, I miss that little bit of ritual Let's uh, take a look at today's starting lineups. They are brought to you by D&N Auto Specialist, where honesty is their best policy. Get it fixed right the first time at D&N Auto, family owned and operated since 1974, specializing in exhaust alignments and tires. You can set up an appointment by phoning 304 267 4078. Atlantic Shores Christian will be the visiting team in Martinsburg, the home team. So let's start with the Seahawks who come in at six wins, six losses, one tie on the season. Their head coach is Philip Kojak, assisted by the outlaw, Jesse James. All right, just Jesse James. But we were asked to add the outlaw part in there. Not uh, by Coach James, though. <laughs> <laughs> they will start with first baseman Diego Duran in the leadoff spot. He'll be followed by the left fielder Jacob Pantic. Batting third, playing second base is Chase James. In the cleanup spot, third baseman Eli Sawyers. The number five hitter today's designated hitter Dylan Cup. Batting in the true DH role for starting pitcher Nick Matt. Field. Doing the catching, hitting sixth is Corbin McLeod, the number seven hitter, shortstop Mitchell Kelly. Batting eighth, playing center field, Chance Atkins, and the number nine hitter in right field is Sean Carroll. So again, Duran, Pantic, and James, followed by Sawyers, Cup, and McLeod. Kelly, Atkins, and Carroll round out the batting order with Matfield on the mound. 
Now for the Martinsburg Bulldogs, coming in at 15-5, and five, winners of six in a row, led by head coach Aaron Byler, assisted by Kurt Zarnecki, Bo Bartley, Larry Cooper, Rick Alderton, who are all on this trip here to Myrtle Beach. For Martinsburg, shortstop Grant Harmon is in the leadoff spot. He'll be followed by first baseman Nicholas Wright, batting third at second base, Ashton Stobbs. Today's starting pitcher is the cleanup up hitter is Trey Sign, batting fifth and catching Aaron Pearson. The number six hitter in center field, Daryl Pope, batting seventh, left fielder Cam Burnett. The number eight hitter, the designated hitter, Elijah Banks. He is batting for today's starting third baseman, Ryan Barker. And batting ninth for Martinsburg in right field is Austin Bartley. So again for the Bulldogs, Harmon, Wright, and Stubbs, followed by Sign, Pearson, and Pope. Burnett, Banks, and Bartley round out the batting order with Barger at third base. Starting lineups brought to you by D&N Auto Specialist, family owned and operated since 1974, specializing in exhaust alignments and tires. Set up your appointment by phoning 304-267-4078. A two-man umpiring crew, just like you see in our regular season games back at home. And those umpires right now going over the ground rules here at Carolina Forest High School, meeting with both head coaches at home plate. Martinsburg in the dugout off the first base side. Matt, what do you think of the uniforms today for the Bulldogs? Orange. I just wanted to see Orange. your reaction because I know this is your favorite part of the entire broadcast is describing the uniform. So I just wanted to see the, the your part. reaction. It is your favorite part. You take pride in describing the uniforms. I want the listening audience to develop the picture in their mind of what they are seeing on a beautiful, sunny, but breezy day here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. All right, so the orange tops, the black letterings, dogs across the front with the white piping around the black letters. Is that good enough so far? Yeah, white around the black. That's good. The white baseball pants with the black pinstripe down the side, the lone pinstripe down the side, and the white hats with the black bill and the red, or the orange, rather, M on the top. See, you're shaking your head. I mean, And outlined in. And outlined in. Yeah, your sight's better than mine. I can't see what they're outlined in. It's a little black outline around okay. the, I'll, I'll buy the that. orange M. And again, the black bill. All right, and again, they're in that first base dugout. So let's go over to the third base or visitors dugout and talk just briefly about the Hawks. The Hawks are in gray baseball pants with black tops. The black tops have the blue letters with the white piping around them. A Seahawks across, no, shore across the front yeah. in the lighter blue with the white outline across the top as well. Trying to see a hat on somebody. Looks like a black hat mm -hmm. with the white logo on the front and the uh, blue bill on the front of that hat as well. There you go. Very well done. Thank you. Appreciate Very it. Very well done. Well, the Martinsburg Bulldogs now making their way out onto the field from that first base dugout as going to the mound and beginning his warm-up tosses will be Trey Sign, and we are just moments away from today's opening pitch. Looking forward to this matchup, Atlantic Shores coming in at 6-6-1. Six, six, and one. Gary, I know that one uh, bothers you just a little bit. There's no ties in baseball. It's like there's no crying in baseball, right? Well, there aren't, and I, I asked the coach about that. <laughs> uh, he said it's because uh, they were playing on a field without lights, and it just got too dark to see. There it is, so it's neither a win nor a loss for either. That was uh, Nansemond Suffolk Academy. Now, I hope I said that correct. That game was back on the 29th of March and ended in a 2-2 tie, and uh, tied it to when darkness settled in. Yep. Uh, I don't know. It, it, I'm glad we have lights up in the pan, yes. because it dry, the tie games just, just drive me nuts. And I'm surprised they didn't suspend it. Uh, the, uh, well, perhaps they won't play again, which could be the case. Well, Maybe they, they don't meet up a second time during the, the rest of this season. Maybe we, There are a couple of fields when, when uh, the summer Blue Sox play that don't have lights, and we've got a rule about that, that you suspend the game ah. if, it, if it gets too dark after, after uh, some point. I can't remember how many innings you got to play, but... Uh, and the same thing works for, for rain on, in, in games if it's tied. 
just about ready to go with today's opening pitch brought to you by the Mortgage Center on Edwin Miller Boulevard in Martinsburg where Mark and Cheryl Savage treat you like family with personal one-on-one -on -one service walking with you from application to settlement plus low interest rates and closing costs. Don't let someone throw you a curve when it comes to your mortgage. Phone 303-998-0500.